Hey guys, um, making a quick video. Well, I really won't say that this will be a quick video, but a video to clarify a few things. Um, concerning, I guess you could say, my innovations when it comes to the Rutiger Grill friction fire. Um, here recently, within the last week or two, I have received close to a hundred private messages um, about a certain YouTube channel and whether or not he's giving me credit for his uh, or rather my innovations to this method um, rather than dig through all of his videos to see whether or not yes he did or did not or whether he said this about me or said that about me I'll go ahead and tell you what I have done and I will direct you to uh, either my videos, the playlist, you can look on my channel for yourself and see the dates and times of my videos and how my, I guess you could say, experimentations with this method evolved and let you decide for yourself if there is any naysayers out there who believe that I haven't, uh, I think my videos and my work, uh, the comments, um, information in the description beneath my videos will, I think, more than back me up. Um, first off, a little bit of a back history. Um, I did a video over this probably, gosh, it's been, I don't know how long ago, it's probably a year and a half ago, over the origins of what then I was referring to as the fire row. Uh, by the way, the name fire row was suggested to me by my friend Ulrika, and uh, it just kind of stuck. And I kind of used it as a working name for the time being because it was a lot easier to say than um, cotton plus rust, uh, or rather cotton plus uh, ash plus friction. I learned fire, you know, this method from Casa del Fuego. And he's a friend of mine. He's from uh, Mexico, I believe it is. And uh, I learned it from his channel. I was like, wow, you know, I thought this guy's got to be pulling my chain. You know, I really didn't think this was real. So I learned that from him and I wanted to know more. So I bombarded him with questions. I was like, well, you know, Gus, what, where'd this come from? This, this, this. And he's like, dude, I, I really don't know. You know, he's, he knew about as much as I did. So I looked into it and I found out, just like I said, as I've always said, because I've heard people say that I've been claiming that I came up with this method. No, I've never said that. Find one place under my videos or in my videos where I've claimed that I've made or invented this method and show it to me. Never one time have I ever said that. Okay, with that said, uh, I did some back digging and all I could find was that a German survival expert named Rudiger Niebuhr actually wrote about it in a book. From my understanding, there are no photos in his book describing this method. And that is all I know. You know what I mean? Um, that maybe this soldier actually um, showed some, um, I guess his, <laughs> the people who had him in prison how to light a cigarette with uh, this uh, cotton fire row trick. And they would let him out a cigarette or a few draws off of the cigarette. I really don't know the full story. I'm just telling you what little I know. I believe it has uh, origins deeper than that. I don't think that just some prisoner, even though they are crafty, and you know, men when they're <laughs> put in stressful situations and they become desperate, they, they're pretty, they can be pretty inventive. Uh, I've seen prisoners make anything up to guns while they were incarcerated, and that's pretty impressive and explosives all kinds of weird things you should look into that it's kind of actually odd that people would be that creative but they are they're desperate but i seriously really don't think that this was actually created there i believe it was brought to um, war from home by one of these soldiers one of these german soldiers that's just my opinion i could be wrong about that now enough about the back history um rudiger row was a way for me to give it a proper name. I felt like Rudiger Rowe was giving homage, or paying homage rather, and respect to Rudiger Newberg 
for bringing it to everyone's attention because he wrote about it. But I looked, though, into the history of this, and from my understanding, all that has ever been used, even up until the point that when I started using this, was cotton and ashes, and people were using sawn planks. And that was it. I quickly went to work, and uh, <laughs> the very first uh, thing that I thought of was, okay, well, other fibers will work. So, you know, cotton, it's used in making clothing. And I thought, well, I'll look into the textile, you know, um, processes, and what was used to make clothing throughout the history of the years, you know, and what could still be used to make clothing. And one of the very first things that I thought of, um, I didn't have any, any immediate, was uh, nettle. And uh, wood nettle is in abundance in my area, especially along the creekways and whatnot. Um, but that wasn't the first wild plant that I used. I actually used dog milk. But back before that, all I had available to me in my home at that moment was jute twine. So I used jute twine. I'm like, okay, it worked, which is I thought it pretty much would. You know, it was stronger than cotton, or at least it felt that way. A few days after I made that video, which, by the way, when I released that video, that video was in, made in November, about mid-November, I think it was, of 2014. Um, after that, probably a couple days, I went and I got me some dog bane. I used dog bane and then nettle. Um, didn't make a video of those. I didn't feel like it was necessary. You know, I felt like, well, I've got you twine you know, on one of my videos. You know, I did put out a few more that I had made too during that time period. I think there, there was um, raffia palm, um, hemp. Uh, I intended to make, well, I did make one, but I didn't release it. It was uh, flax, and that video looked real dark. Everything looked black. I couldn't, I couldn't really see myself. It looked like you could see like glimmers of light around a silhouette of me. So. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to release that. It looks stupid, you know. But um, the whole idea was was just to show people that, yes, plant fibers could work, you know. And did I use plant fibers first? Yes, I did. I used plant fibers back in 2014 with this method. Um, also, during that time period, uh, I discovered that there are other um, accelerants, and that's what I choose to call them. Uh, some people call them catalysts. I call it an accelerant, you know, simply for the fact that it accelerates that process of ignition. And that's kind of what I looked into when I started my research was, are there things that are going to be friction and heat sensitive in a powder form? I thought, well, there's plenty of those. It's just a matter of being able to get it to roll on the boards themselves. So what I did was, is I took, uh, one of the first ones I used was, I think it was uh, bracket fungus. I think I used chaga and then some kind of bracket fungus. Then I, I quickly showed that yes, you could possibly use um, any, pretty much any bracket type fungus, uh, like the harder ones that you could just get powder off of. They all seem to work really well. I picked up one, I've got a video somewhere in my library about, um, I think it's just a random fungus that was growing in, near one of my flower beds. I don't really recall when it was. I think it was last summer, you know. I don't really know when it was, but it's not the point. The point is, those were some of my earlier um, um, experimentations. Even in the, the fall of 2014, um, I also came up with rust, and I've been using rust since then. Uh, I didn't release a video until it was like March of 2014. I'll be honest with you, I didn't think people would really even care simply for the fact that rust is kind of a, it's kind of considered a nuisance. Nobody wants rust. You know, I can't think of really anything to use it for outside of maybe like making thermite or something, you know, mixing it with aluminum powder. And why are you doing that, I have to ask, you know? Powders like from funguses like chaga, bracket fungus, uh, Fomus fomentarius, the Felinia species, all of these I had used uh, earlier on in my experimentations um, also, uh, potassium permanganate, uh, calcium hypochlorite. It's just that, guys, look, I'm, I'm busy. I have a life outside of YouTube. YouTube isn't my only thing in life. I don't live to do YouTube. YouTube is just a place where I use, uh, in the event that my computer crashes or something happens to my external hard drives, I have a place to store some of my videos or experiments. It's just that people started seeing these and started bombarding me with questions, so I thought, 
I'll at least start talking a little bit. But the majority of my material, they're just experiments for me. And that is all. Um, but I assure you, in no way, shape, form, or fashion have I ever copied anyone's work and tried to take credit for it. I came up with rust. I came up with all the plants in my videos. I did not, I will not, claim something that I did not do. Um, I also started using what appeared to be surfaces other than, I guess you could say, sawn planks. Uh, uh, the very first thing I ever tried was probably within the same week after doing this in my home, I was like, well, this, this really, you could really do this anywhere. You could do this out in nature. So I took it outdoors like the next day. After doing my first video in October of 2014, boom. The first right way I ever did it, though, in nature, was with a split limb, and I did it straddle seated, I believe it was, on a big log. I just sit there city, and it worked amazingly well. I thought, well, I'll try the plants. I tried the plants. Same thing. I'm trying to think. Anything recent. I really, to be honest with you, I do have some things. I'm going to go ahead and keep those under the... Uh, wraps for right now. I'm not really going to release those. I'm not really sure if anyone's taken offense to my videos or me, but I can assure you right now I have done nothing to anyone. And if I have offended you, then I'm sorry. I meant nothing by anything that I've said. Uh, there is one other thing though that I want to kind of touch on. I've heard it, and I've had a few people tell me in some private messages and whatnot that someone had suggested that I was stating that friction fire is a emergency survival fire making method. I have never said that in my videos. Uh, there are no videos of mine where it states that. As a matter of fact, it, I have several videos stating the opposite of that. That I do not believe that friction fire is an emergency survival method of fire making. I have one video that's almost two years old. I believe it is two years old with me and my son. And I'm talking about that. And if you guys get a chance, I think you really should watch it because I think you'll get something from it. It's just me and my son doing a Q&A. And I'm talking to him and I'm actually showing him the effects of um, water submersion with um, uh, ferrule rods and lighters. A cheap lighter, I believe it is, because my number one, whatever. Yeah, I've also heard the same individual who may have an issue with me um, claims that I turned against him or something. I haven't turned against anyone. Uh, that sounds like paranoia to me. Um, something to the effect of he made some comments at, on his channel somewhere about uh, friction fire not being viable or reliable or something. Well, I've been saying that forever in my videos. I've actually said that a couple years ago. I've got older videos, older than when he started saying these things from my understanding. So I don't see how he could actually think that's me. That's a problem with me. He must be thinking of someone else because it couldn't be me. Because I don't if believe it's real life. people are claiming my ideas or my innovations as their own, uh, I may have a problem with you. Yes, I will. But if you've given me credit for my ideas, there's no problem between us. Now, if you're also claiming that I've said that friction fire is reliable when I didn't say that, we've got a problem because I've never said that. But if you haven't said that about me, we don't have a problem. Um, I'm an easy going guy. I get along with everyone. I try to do what I can. Like I said earlier, uh, all of my experimentations, uh, I did, uh, geez, almost two years ago now with this method. Uh, I really don't know the real time period. I really don't think it was two years, probably like a year and a half ago. Um, most of those were done just on the spur of the moment. And when I got a few moments, I'd make a video for people and release a little bit of information here, there, and all the other. Uh, but where I kept receiving so many bad private messages from so many people since last summer, I thought, you know what, I'm going to have to say something about this. Because this one individual, if he has claimed my ideas as his own, that's not right. I'm going to have to set the record straight, and that's what this video is about. Anybody has any questions, I would like you to post below. I will direct you to the truth and the facts. If someone hasn't said that, I'm sorry. Then you know what? I owe you an apology. But trying to make bad relations online to cover up anybody's work or suggest otherwise, that's not a way to do things. 
I'm not here for views or subscriptions. Um, I'm here to share information, but mostly <laughs> I'm here for myself. This is just for my own documentation. I've said that from day one. That's the reason why the majority of my videos in the beginning um, had uh, the comments disabled. Um, these weren't for people. These were for me. You know, I was just, I would watch it. Okay, this is what I could do with this. I could improve more with this. You know, it was it was a way for me to look at things. You know, was this material difficult? Was it hard? I had private notes. I had other videos. You wouldn't believe it, but I've got like a hundred more videos here that you guys don't see, but private. And I probably won't be sharing those. There's just things that I want to think of, like think about what I've done, what I've experienced. It has nothing to do with fire making. Some of them are shelter building. Uh, uh, ideas over um, hypothermia and uh, hyperthermia, just different things, scientific principles, um, just all kinds of things. It's just stuff that I'm not really ready to share right now. But I really, really hope that everybody watches this. I'm watching from be from beginning to end. You'll see that I'm not some. Um, I don't even know one of these comments. I'd have had them written down somewhere, suggested that I was an egotistical, self-centered, whatever. No, I'm not. I'm actually kind of like a, for lack of better words, an absent-minded professor. Very much so. You know what I mean? Um, I actually took off from doing a lot of stuff today and work just to make this video and another one too, by the way, which I think you guys should really watch because, geez, I don't know what to make of this. I, I'll, I'll just release it and you guys will see. It's, it's, it's kind of weird. Something strange happened here last night and I kind of like don't want to talk about that. Maybe somebody out there can give me some peace of mind because what I saw back here last night, that was weird. And like I said, I've been up all night. Actually, I've been up for 24 hours and I'm rambling. You know, I believe I may be tired, but I don't think I can sleep because simply for the fact that was strange. But um, anyway, I hope I've answered questions and I hope I've come off as being honest and forthright. Um, I did do a lot of innovations with this method. Um, yes, I did come up with um, someone had me to remember them. Jute, hemp, sisal, yucca, flax, um, Indian hemp, which is also known as dog mane, milkweed, um, what's the other one? Wood nettle, um, let's see, Jesus. Indian mallow, which is also known as velvet leaf, I've done that. Flax, um, and these were all done between November of 2014 and January of uh, 20, November of 2014 to January 2015. So within a couple of months of one another, you know, like three month period, that's when I did most of my experiments. It's just like I said, most of my stuff is kind of just spread out or mashed together, spread out or mashed together, and I release them sporadically. But uh, that's the best I can do as far as telling you time periods. I really don't know rust. I came up with that sometime in November of 2014. After split wood and doing all that stuff. I did that with I did that back in November. Actually, it may have been still October of 2014 when I first did this out in the woods with split wood. You know, that, that was a long time ago. I am actually just trying to document this for myself. I've got some different ideas with this. I've actually got a few other things that, in my opinion, exceed the fire road or rutigan road, whatever you choose to call it. Um, I'm not ready to share that with everybody yet. I don't want it getting into the wrong hands. Um, let's just say it's more efficient. A lot more. Um, you guys have a good evening. I hope this has answered your questions. If not, you can get back with me. Uh, ask me questions below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. But have a good day. Take it easy.